Episode 7, Agent Red. Oh, yeah. This is my, this is what I'm all about, these types of films. Jamie was born for a movie just like this. Uh, Pretty much. I mean, we usually, me and my brother for Bad Movie Night, we usually watch things that are a little bit higher profile than something like Agent Red, which obviously was not released to theaters. I mean, that would have been embarrassing. Yeah, no way. But, you know, this is kind of... Uh, you know, week in, week out, what I do for, in my free time is watch films kind of like this. What began as an innocent conversation among friends would soon spiral out of control and later be referred to by future generations as the eighth wonder of the modern world. Mac East Second Floor Studios takes you on the journey of your lifetime as your captains, Alex the Thoughtful, Jamie the Brain, Kyle El Capitan, and Zach the Backbone present Submersion. For those of you who are just listening, and you're probably not familiar with Agent Red because why would you be? No one is. It has an IMDb score of 3.3 and a Rotten Tomatoes user score. I was going to say user. It's got to be user. 25%. That's... Horrible. Yeah. It's Dolph Lundgren on a sub, diehard style, taking out people. That's and... what I thought. That's When when I was watching this, I was like, this is diehard well, on most, a sub. It's funny because a lot of people would say like diehard. Oh, man, diehard really influenced action films and like every action film is is diehard. But when you delve into like B and C level films, like this I'd say is like a C level film. It's, re- it's really almost like every single even, film. You'd even go diehard. that high. To say C level on this? Well, so B a B film is kind of a lower profile theatrical release, uh, traditionally, right? Like you have your A film and your B film, and it's a double feature. Your A film's the main one, the B film's the second one. This is obviously not a B film. No. Yeah. So you like think a, this warrants a C. Not a C even film. A, D? a C film would be like straight to DVD. So I think that was maybe what they're aiming for. It may have dipped into the D. Uh, usually, if you go below C, I think they just call it Z. Mm. Z films, but. I believe it. Yeah, this is a, a very low profile film. <laughs> uh, Alex, did you ever even heard of this movie before this podcast? No, not at all. Me neither. That's too bad. Luckily, I was looking forward. I've been looking Jamie. forward to it. Yeah, who yeah. knows all these horrible yeah. movies. Kind of wish I hadn't seen it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you first talked about this podcast, like I had, I was like, ooh, Phantom. Or I really in my mind, I was like, ooh, David Duchovny, Submarine Film. And then the second one was like, ooh, Asian Red. <laughs> 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 they were the first two. And I was like, I can't wait to watch that. And then, yeah, then there's uh, Hunt for Red October and Das Boot and like whatever. All these like decent movies. Yeah, oh, whatever. my goodness. Mm. Well, <laughs> I... Shall we? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty safe to say that this one hit like below crush depth on how bad it was if we're rating this one. Like, yeah. this is beyond bad. You're suffering through that inch of sub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that a moose bouche of sub is not going down very easily. Uh, All right. All right. Let's start with the beginning, which didn't have anything to do with this movie at all other than uh, yeah. when they were flying in the helicopter sure they open we're open in a helicopter and we're introduced to our hero Dolph Lundgren Dolph then, Lundgren aka Corporal or Captain uh, Hendricks and all these other rando commandos yeah literally rando commandos they have they are random commandos <laughs> the worst face paint on i know it yeah. just looks like somebody <laughs> took a sharpie and just drew a line <laughs> like on the, the dude's face yeah like you're not no, that makes you like more noticeable. Yeah, exactly. And none of them are uniform, so it didn't even look like they were doing something together as a team. Like if they were looking for the same face paint or something, it was bad. It looked stupid from the beginning. I almost turned it off right there. I had you may have wanted to, yeah, uh, you should have. I had no idea what they were even doing. It doesn't make it actually makes no sense. And they're they're flying along, and they're like, "We gotta get in. We get the get the plane. You're the only one who can fly it." And like, can you think you can fly it? And Dolph Lundgren's like. You better believe it. And uh, they get, they get there, and basically everyone's just snapping necks, slicing necks open, you know, killing people, which is like standard for this level of film. Like, okay, all right, cool. I but, guess. But what are we doing? Yeah. And so he runs in there, and he finds like a locker room, and f- finds like a change of clothes, Dolph Lundgren, like a change of clothes, yes, in order to trick the people so he can grab this plane before they blow everything up. He's got to fly away as they blow everything up. 
Right. And so he puts on this suit and walks in, and we get a close up of his arm badge, and it's an American flag that says, um, "What was it?" Well, it's got uh, somebody's last Holloway. name. Holloway. Holloway. And I'm sitting there being like, wait, so are they attacking the Americans? Like, he's pretending to be an American to infiltrate this American secret base. hideout. Like, wait, is he the bad guy? And I was sitting there for a second being like, holy shit, is he the bad guy in this film? Are we watching Dolph Lundgren take over a submarine as like a bad guy? That would have been an amazing twist. But no, it doesn't, you don't know who it is or what they are. Because they, I mean, they went out of their way to zoom in on that arm badge. Yeah, yeah. And they you were supposed to notice that it was an American flag. And I'm gonna I'm gonna treat you to something a little in depth of research. So I don't know if you with a with a trivia on this on this guy, you may have read that this was a a film that when they got the final cut from the original director, one of the producers was like, No way. We are not releasing this film. It <laughs> makes no sense. It is not comp they basically the quote was, This is not competent enough to release. So they brought in this porn director, Jim Wisinski or something. I'll I'll talk more about him during the trivia part of it but they bring him in and he's one of the producers as well and they're like you gotta you gotta fix this and so they wanted to do it without any reshoots so he started filling it with stock footage from other films made by the same production company oh my god and this whole scene i'm pretty sure is from that so this is a plot of a different Dolph Lundgren film that came (laughs) out the year before (laughs) when he's in the suit Stormcatcher, Stormcatcher, another Dolph Lundgren film. Oh, my God. A renegade general plots to bomb Washington using a new top-secret jet called the Stormcatcher. The only trouble is only one man, Dolph Lundgren, is capable of flying it. So they seek to put him on the run in a conspiracy that makes him appear to have murdered several men and stolen the plane. And do you know what his name in that film was? Holloway? Captain Holloway. Are you... Shitty that me. whole scene is from Stormcatcher. <laughs> Unfortunately, Stormcatcher doesn't have a submarine because it would have been amazing to watch that film now. <laughs> this... <laughs> watch the same shit over again. This was my favorite part of the whole movie. Uh, and it doesn't. It's not, it has nothing to do with anything. It has they, nothing. They literally put it in there because they needed some way to make him the hero. Because uh, from, uh, from what you can't tell, but I think I'm trying to decipher the trivia. It seems like he may have been the bad guy in in the original the cut of no, no, in the original cut of Agent Red. Oh. But then they were like, oh, this doesn't work. So, like, we're going to make him the good guy and use this whole beginning. The beginning to makes make him no see. sense. Yeah. The no. thing I love the most, though, is when he's in that outfit, yeah. he looks like one of the members of Daft Punk. And he goes in there yeah. and he just snaps that dude's neck. And when they, like, discover that he's an American or he's Dolph Lundgren, and then he just busts out his suppressed pistol and just lays all these guys to waste. And it's all in slow motion. Yeah. But then. He runs out of ammunition, and what's he do? Throwing knife. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, but that's not even Dolph Lundgren. That is some guy pretending to be <laughs> Dolph Lundgren in a different movie. <laughs> it's, so, it's so crazy. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Why did this happen to us? Okay. Since there wasn't a lot of information to read on this, I was reading like user reviews on IMDb, and a lot of people were really pissed off because that guy that was filming that is clearly almost a foot shorter than Dolph Lundgren, and people yeah. were complaining <laughs> about that. <laughs> Oh, so anyway, he returns from, he flies that plane like a motherfucker and gets out of there. Like, obviously, he's Dolph Lundgren. And they're like, yeah, Dolph Lundgren, you're then the they, best. Then they cut to the Pentagon. Yeah, they get to the Pentagon, and he's getting hearty congratulations, as he should. He was able to steal that secret plane from yeah. someone. <laughs> Looked like a like a U.S. stealth bomber. That he just Someone else had it. Back. I don't know. And then, yeah, so n- n- very little explanation as what he was getting congratulated on, even. But they're like... Slowly roll, not a time for vacation yet. You got to go out one more time. And he's like, shit. I don't want to do it. <laughs> like, well, it, we watch this well produced and edited film that has been, you know, made about this virus called Agent Red. And then you'll think differently. Oh, my God. And then every time they talk about Agent Red, they go through the entire they, effing oh. explanation. They They're can't like, stop explaining it. They're like, all right, so the U.S. accidentally invented this back in the 50s. And then Russia stole it. And then it 
is too dangerous. And so the U.S. is taking it back. And, they're like, and then someone else will walk in the room and be like, hey, guys, what you talking about? And they're like, OK, well, this Agent Red and it's too dangerous. And they killed a bunch of people in this village. So Russia doesn't want it anymore. So now they're giving it back to the U.S. And like, oh. But they also talked about how it was actually <laughs> created. And it's also classified information. But they just like everyone knows it. it. And like, no oh, one, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so they show this video of basically this village in Russia. And I'm a scientist and the I'm not a doctor. Like if I was a doctor, I think it's even more probably would be come off even more ridiculous. So we're talking about this virus having like a six minute you know, time to infection to time to die. <laughs> oh, the description of that is so good. <sighs> what? That's impossible, by the way. So when they're talking about it, they say infection within six minutes or within three minutes. And then it kills you within 12. But they're like... <laughs> By six minutes, you're bleeding from your eyes, your nipples, and your rectum. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even and make. We'll, s- we'll come back to that later. It doesn't even make sense. I don't even think like like uh, the vi- in order for a virus to cause something like that, it's going to have to reproduce in your cells like over and over and over again. It just not. It would be. Jamie. You don't even have the resources. Like thermodynamics doesn't allow that to happen. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting too deep into the how ridiculous that all is. But they are the ones explaining it. They're explaining it all the time, and it hurts me every time they did. They probably did it. I mean, close to a dozen times. Uh, yeah, every single time someone came in, they did it. And it's funny because other films, it's weird when a film goes through it a second time, like where they right. explain a whole plot and then some, they explain it. it to someone else. They did it like four or five times. And there's like this famous scene in uh, one of the, uh, it's like North by Northwest or w- one of those films where they've, they've explained like this whole plot that a bad guy has and then mm-hmm. someone else comes becomes involved and they go, oh, so what's going on? And instead of explaining it, they show them walking through an airfield and you can't hear them talk because of all the propeller, the noise of the planes. And they okay. walk for like five seconds and the guy comes out and he goes, oh, interesting. And then they don't explain it because they just pretend like it was explained to him while the airplanes were going on. And that's how you do it. Like it if is. you really need to do it, do it in a clever way that makes it so the audience doesn't have to hear it so many fucking times. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> so anyways, after they yeah. After show him the video. He's like, oh, shit. Well, at least like, at well, least I don't have to see my ex-fiance. <laughs> Surprise. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be on the submarine. And she was told that you're going to be there yesterday. Yeah. Oh, man. So he's not, not only is he going to have to share with that, this woman who he sent a ring to to get married and she sent it back. But because that's a normal thing to do, do you if just send the ring? And just mail it. You, yeah, you send that ring over. UPS guy shows up, gets on the <laughs> yeah. Detailed instructions. You don't. I mean, don't let him wing it. But right. detailed instructions on how to propose, and then you get the response back via telegram about a couple weeks later. So, so we just find out that he's going to be on there with his ex fiance. Then it cuts to the scene of these guys on a boat. Are they on a boat though? Really, they're just in a warehouse. Yeah, they, yeah. It looks like they're in a <laughs> There's warehouse. It's an external shot of a boat, but they they blow it up. Yeah. So basically, and then they yeah. and then they show the boat, like, well, what was you know they were on the boat. Yeah. I'm doing quotes with my hands, but you can't hear that. Um, and they blow it up, but it looks just like a total piece of shit. I'm like, yeah. No, nobody's using that boat. Anyway, Obviously, you like, blew just it up. blow it up. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. So, like, the, the, and, and you, they give a little backstory for them. So they're they're like some kind of rebels or dissidents. They're angry with the Russian government for having used Agent Red on um, the population, having killed the people in this village. So they want to teach them a lesson. So they're going to steal Agent Red as it's getting transported, and then. Uh, launch it at Moscow in New York City. But in this first place that they go, this rundown boat, they were supposed to meet someone and get some like transportation plans. And it's not uh-huh. there. So they go to plan B with, uh, the, with the woman of the group where it's like, you got to get in it and go get that general that we know is part of that transportation and get those plans. Right. So and this so, is... I mean, we're seven movies deep and this is our first nude scene. It is. I think it is our first sex scene. First too. nipples, for yep. sure. We, I think we probably saw, I mean, I've seen a lot of dicks in these movies. <laughs> you guys have yet to been treated to it because you get the other cuts of right. the films. Uh, but this was the closest we came. Certainly. At one point, you certainly saw the top of his dick. You just, I don't know if you saw the entire thing it, it, in its entirety at any point. It was hard to tell. I was, I was watching it pretty closely, though, so I don't think so. <laughs> I was just sitting there like, please, God. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Uh, so they're and they have some rough lines in this one. There's oh a, my there's a line. Did you God. did you have the? One I got one written down. Here. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's probably the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, she she said something to the effect where I don't. He's they're he going wants, back and he, forth. He wants, she wants to go on this. Tell me about the sub or something like that. Oh, she wants she wants him to take her with him. Yeah, I want to go with you. And he she he's like, oh on a on a sub full of guys like. You know, I'm sure they'd want to go down on more than just the sub or something like that. And I was like, ugh. Right. <laughs> yeah, porn director. That's who made this film. And then she's like, you lied to get me into bed. And he's like, a man's obligation to his erection. Yep. <laughs> like, like, what the hell am I watching right now? And what's funny is, like, it's these kind of – you get a little bit of glimpse into – you know, what's made in these D level, C level, Z level films or whatever. But like people do watch these for real. There's, they're, there's, we did. they're not making it for, no, no, no. But I'm saying for like real, like they're not making these for fun. Like there is a market for this. There are people out there right. that they have want their Dolph money. Lundgren, they want their Dolph Lundgren action film. And it's things like this that they're looking for. They're looking for people snapping necks, slicing throats and talking about erections and going down on a Russian a, woman. A, a woman girl. Yeah. A Russian girl. So like they're, they're these are what people enjoy all day long, and so God. welcome to the, welcome to the world, my friends. <laughs> yes, and so the one thing that I really thought was funny, um, they they kept doing this cutaway to this kind of Russian general. Yeah, somebody's talking and at a desk. Yep. Yeah, I don't know what was going on, but the whole time you just sit there and you look, and he just has a whole fifth of vodka. Yeah, he just has vodka hanging his out. Yes, <laughs> and I was like, this is what I was talking about before when I wanted. Russian nesting dolls on a sub. Yeah. This is basically the equivalent. You're sitting there with a bottle of vodka on your desk. I'm going to assume you're probably Russian. Yeah. Basically, a, like a D-level film is like every stereotype you can think. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they just bring in these, you know, girls right off the bus in LA and have them take off their tops for movies. And it's like, yep, that's what this film is. That's exactly what they do. Right. They bring in people who really want to be actors and have them do like really embarrassing things. <laughs> it's Unfortunately. <laughs> It's absurd. So anyways, this girl is with this general, and then it's revealed that, oh, no, the, uh, the other dissident is standing outside the door, and he's there, and he's going to – she shoots the general and takes his transportation plans. And now they know how the virus is going on the sub. Right. Yeah. And then Dolph Lundgren flies in. Yeah. And so his ex fiance slash girlfriend it's complicated it, he, she's like oh man he's late i'm so angry at him like typical hendrix typical captain matt hendrix like always late and then there's another guy who clearly like likes her or something i don't even know it comes up and is like oh, you, who are you waiting for and she's like oh matt hendrix stupid matt hendrix and then they <laughs> <laughs> right i had, had no idea into... who any of these people were but she yeah. you got the idea that she was the ex-fiance but literally no idea who anybody else yeah. is. And that guy was like some tool of getting the plot set again because she explains what Agent Red is to again. him again. Third time in a row. Literally the third scene in a row that Agent what Agent Red is and does is explained to like, us. Like, hey, uh, we get it. Yeah, we understand. <laughs> Maybe the typical viewer of this film doesn't, but we got it. <laughs> <laughs> so she heads into the sub and he's, you know, uh, he's like Dolph Lundgren. The airport. Yeah. He finds a kooky taxi driver, which he's got, he's playing I, chess on the, on the hood of the car. And he's also drinking. If vodka. this is a, if this is a major Hollywood film, that taxi driver is showing up on the sub going to be like, you didn't pay my tab. And it's like, Oh, we already left. And then becomes one of the heroes. <laughs> it's like, it's like a kooky taxi driver. I would have loved that. That would have been like played by twist. Rob Schneider. Like at the very end when there's like a shootout, if all of a sudden the taxi driver just emerges and shoots somebody yeah. and you're like, this is now the best movie I've ever seen. Yeah. Nope, yeah. So she just gets to the sun. Yeah. So he just gets there. They, they literally leave without any problem. They, the, the bad guys bring the virus on and kill two people. She's supposed to check the bio like hazard containment area. She doesn't. Because they just, Dolph's like badgering her about, yeah. hey, yeah. Uh, why did you send the ring back? Let's get together yeah. again. And there's all this weird little love music. And plan. then they launch without even thinking about it. And the other weird thing is that during all this, they're kind of cutting back and forth. But both Moscow and the U.S. are aware that a body was found of the guy that who was supposed to transport, that general who was shot. And nobody cares. And no one cares. They're like, oh, that's weird. The guy who was supposed to transport the virus onto the sub was found in a dumpster in Russia. All right. <laughs> it's like, but who's transporting the virus then? <laughs> like, I don't know. What? <laughs> you, right. s- you seem totally not concerned with the fact that the guy who's supposed to be putting the virus on the sub is dead. 
but he still checked in. All right. Yeah, whatever. that seems fine. No big deal. And the whole reason they're even Russia even giving it back to America is they're like, yeah, Russia can't take care of this. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, we got to take care of this because obviously it'll fall into bad hands if if they keep it. And it's right. like, oh, and the guy who was supposed to do that is dead. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> so well, this will probably work out. Let's launch this up. Let's get it. Let's get it underwater. <laughs> Uh, hopefully nothing uh, bad happens. Yeah, hope, this hopefully, this, hopefully this will be can. fine. And so, yeah, so this is 30 minutes into the movie, and we finally got into the sub. And honestly, oh more happens in the first 30 minutes than happens in the rest of the movie, because the rest of the movie just starts to be diehard in the sub, where people but, are just kind of running around for the most part. But the worst version of Die Hard you could imagine. Yeah. Die Hard is awesome. Well, no, I'm not saying Agent Red is as good as Die Hard. No, I know. But, I mean, they're... This is Dolph Lundgren version of Die Hard. No, it's even it's not even a Dolph Lundgren because Dolph Lundgren has done many versions of Die Hard. Well, this is probably his worst version of Die Hard he's ever done. It's a reimagining. Yeah. So. So anyway, yeah. he's like he's following around his ex fiance, and she locks herself into the biocontainment area because he he's wants like, she she wants babe, to get away from him. Babe, let me in. Yeah. So gotta gotta open this door, and while she's in there, you know, all of a sudden the door unlocks, and he's like. Finally, what a bitch, right? And like goes into the room and she's been taken captive by the by the Russian dissidents. And they're like, ha ha, like, who are you? And they're like, oh, I'm I'm her ex fiance. And they're like, well, soon you'll be an ex human or some other that, ridiculously bad quip that they say. Or, I don't know. Ex fiance becomes his name for yeah. the rest of the movie. And so they get in a big fight. And he just snaps somebody's neck. He snaps someone's neck, but then they toss him over the yeah, they toss him over like the the um banister or whatever, and he falls like a story down to a metal grate and they're like, He's gotta be dead. He's like bleeding from the mouth and they're like, He's probably dead. And they release the toxin, the virus, into the they put on masks and they release the toxin into the sub. All right. And these masks <clears throat> Are they not make even no secure. sense. They're just like you put. It, You're talking about a virus that can kill someone in 12 minutes. And it'd be like if I just put a hood on. Yeah, you like, like you okay. like you like put your hood and pulled the strings real tight, and you're like, I'm good. <laughs> I got it. I mean, that is it. It made no sense. They were they should have stayed in their freaking containment suits that they were yeah, in. Yeah, obviously, but right. they couldn't because they they would have had to have like a five minute scene of them getting out of the containment suit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's time to get out of this containment suit. The uh the one oh, thing yeah. I had an issue with this scene though is this uh <clears throat> this virus that the, when they released into the sub actually killed like the whole crew in under three minutes when we were told before it would take twelve. We also were told they were going to be bleeding from rectums. I did not see any blood I did from not any see, rectum. No, I just saw people coughing and dying. Yeah. yeah, I was watching those rectums closely. No blood. I was watching from the nipples because they specifically <laughs> said bleeding, bleeding from the nipples. You want those niggas? How funny would it have been if they were just like, it's like two all red marathon? Dots. They're like marathon runners with their bloody <laughs> nipples or something. <laughs> like, oh no! Like Andy in the office. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't happen. No, none of it happened. In fact, they, but, it seemed like they may have run out of money and just had people lie on the floor and pretend like they were dead. This was this movie, so drawn out. The too. movie, the movie magic was not there. It was less magical than it should have been. The entire time I watched this, I thought I could go buy a camcorder and we could film a movie better than this. So I, I do have one question for you. So he obviously doesn't have a mask on. Longgren? Yeah. But do you know why? Do you, you, know, you caught why he survived? Well, yeah, they gave him those antidotes. Right. So I do have a question for you. Why does no one else on the sub carrying Agent Red have the antidote that the Pentagon seems to have? handy the the doctor at the pentagon said that they just tested it and they've only tested it on animals so they don't even know if it works on humans at all so they just gave it too much um, precaution um i'm gonna be honest with you if i was on that submarine i'm gonna be taking that antidote uh yeah i'd have any any kind or, of or at least have some of it on board <laughs> they only they only gave Dolph 72 hours worth is what they said and this movie takes place over longer than 72 hours and he gives some of it away as well <laughs> Dude, so... it, felt like, it felt like I literally was sitting there watching this for 72 hours. I, I was born, lived, and died while watching this film. <laughs> I, one, of, one of my existences in a different plane, plane of existence was just watching this film. It's like I was raised by wolves, but I was raised by Agent Red. I knew only Agent Red. Can you imagine? That's the only movie that you've ever been raised on. That's it, torture. That's, that, you, you'd have your children taken away from you. 
So anyways, he wakes up because he's got his antidote coursing through his veins and But they didn't even show him taking it, did they? No, they did. He was he was he was given it at the Pentagon. Yeah, the lady gave but, it to her at the Pentagon. Okay. So that's why, yeah. That's, it it like, took me a minute to like make a connection because I'm like, what is he like immune or something? I know, me too. I I, I had actually kind of forgotten because I, I think a lot of this stuff, it's because of the editing and having to cobble together reshoots and stuff like that. I think that fight was maybe not part of the reshoots, and so he falls, but he doesn't have a mask on, so I had to make up some reason why he's able to survive them changing it to being an antidote or right. into being a chemical weapon. So they give him an antidote, but it's like. 15 minutes earlier in the film so you forget that he's taken it and then you're like wait oh I thought this was a 100% take rate because they've said they said that like eight times like 100% infection rate 100% infection rate 100% infection rate then Dolph Lundgren's laying there and you're like wait 100% infection rate yeah I've, infection I've been told and fatality I've been told one thing right. <laughs> I if I know one fucking thing from this movie it's a 100% infection rate well, I mean know two things <laughs> I have a PhD in you agent red was, at this point you know it was actually created by America <laughs> Russians stole it Killed an entire village. <laughs> and you know that it's 100% infection, 100% kill rate. It can survive six hours outside the body. It's a three minutes to infection, 12 minutes to death, six minutes you're, pu- you're puking and bleeding out of your orifices. We know everything about this. It's like we may as well be CDC experts on Agent Red. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> That's how much they explained it to us. <laughs> and I don't even think this... It's not even the last time they explain it in the movie. Though. No, <laughs> they keep on doing it. They're it's explaining like, it to like other on. people on other subs. They're explaining it like the CNN news guy who apparently knows everything is explaining it to Wait, the how did you say public. That? The CNN. It's oh no, a- CNN. <laughs> sorry, CNN. CNN. I, <laughs> ah, sorry, I, I don't know how I got that confused. Yeah, this is not <laughs> fake news. My mistake, guys. <laughs> this is real. This is not fake news. Yeah, CNN. It's it, what's funny is what they said underneath it wasn't uh, didn't even match up with what would be CNN. It was like World Headline News. CNN World Headline News. I was like, what? Oh yeah, I remember looking at that. So I thought, oh, how are they gonna? Tie in that Z, but like I, he knew everything. It was like literally like like Dolph Lundgren would fart in the sub, and he'd be like breaking. Fart. Dolph Lundgren just fart, farted in that sub, mm-hmm. and it's like like every single thing is like he's causing widespread panic through New York. <laughs> like, how is the government not calling them up and being like, Dude, stop, please, stop. <laughs> for the love of God? We need to not like we're gonna have more people die from this than an actual chemical attack. Like right. just for the love of God, stop. Oh. And so he wakes up and he's like. You don't mess with Dolph, the greatest export Sweden has ever, you know, provided. And off he runs. Sorry, Frederick. No, yeah, yeah. Our friend Frederick from Sweden is not the greatest export. Dolph Lundgren. Uh, Dolph Lundgren is. <laughs> and um, so he he runs and he, like, Linda's been taken up to the bridge, um, the doctor, his his, his ex-fiance. And, Wait, not not yet, has she? Yeah, I thought so. I thought I thought she was taken up there. And then, oh no, no, wait, wait! He rescues her or something. He does. Yeah. yeah. While the, while they're in the process of taking her up there, he rescues her. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. So he comes to her rescue. Everything gets real hazy here because there's so much like switching, switching and running around, right. and nothing. Everything starts to not make sense, even less sense than it did before. And so after they, I think he even takes her mask off. Yeah, 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 they all take they all take their mask off. Oh, because they purge. They purge. They go. That's what I'm saying. Oh, they, they go surface. up to the bridge and they surface, and they purge everything out, and they take all they take their masks off. And is this the film where they use the same scenes from Crimson Tide for the dives? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, yeah. So they have uh, they have stock footage from Crimson Tide. They have stock footage from a f- bunch of films, and I, and I have the list of them. Do you want to, Do you want to know the list? It's not part of my trivia. Uh, well, we can get to it. We later can, we'll, then. we'll save it then. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of them. Some a bunch of them aren't even um, uh, submarine films. Oh, really? Yeah, just like I believe films. it. There's all sorts of weird, weird cuts that I'm just like, why is that a thing? And then why is it in this movie? Yeah. Then there's other. There's like weird attacks as well. Like a lot of like planes and ships and all kinds yes. of stuff that's not submarine. So yes. Yeah. So anyways, they surface, they purge, and, and then the U.S. government gets real like nervous, right? Because like, like they surface, they didn't. Oh, huh, that's anything. weird. They didn't say anything. They're venting their stuff. They do get suspicious that maybe there was like the virus released because that would make sense, right? Like you're purging, you're vent- venting all the air and all that stuff. So like, you know, oh, well maybe the the thing got out, but they send a they decide to send a sub over there to kind of check it out in a way, and so a sub is sent over. To the USS, which one was this? The Indiana. Yeah, so Indiana is sent over there to kind of engage and you know check what's going on because they're nervous that it's surfaced and it's not communicating with them right. and stuff. And they're not hearing anything from it. Yeah. But this also, 
This is about the point in the movie where we get another great line when Dolph oh, gives yeah. his fiance. Ex-fiance. Well, so, so yeah, then he, he's able to rescue Linda. Somehow she like she like runs. She kind of runs away and then runs into him. <laughs> and is, right. He's like, oh, it's like, oh, well, yeah, it's, it's him. There's no one else on board. It's basically the bad. Everybody's guys. dead. And, yeah, and then, everyone's yeah. dead except for your ex fiance and the the Russians. And so now they're together and they're like trying to hatch a plan a little bit. They are, but yeah. just just so he knows she's safe, he gives her some of the antidote, and he sticks the needle in her arm, and she's like, "Ow!" Yeah, he said, "You said that the last time I put it in." <laughs> I was watching this with my wife. No, because she <laughs> wait. Why would she, why was she even suffering? She was it? she was just home, and she's like, "Don't you have to watch some stupid movie or something?" I said, "Yes, I do." Yeah. <laughs> And uh, usually you'd be like, it's not stupid. This time you're like, yeah, I do. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this is pretty dumb. <laughs> she didn't even like bad an eye at most of this. I'm like, look at this. And I rewind it. I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this line is literally made by someone who directs porn movies. Like, I, that makes sense. I didn't know bit. that until you guys told me that. But that totally makes sense now. <laughs> it's, <sighs> my God, this movie. And so they hatch a plan. She's gonna go and try to get the virus, basically. With the with the it. way this was going, she just tried to, should have tried to sleep with all of them and get to the top. You yeah, know? That that would have been. I, I would not have put it past this movie to have that be the, the storyline. Yeah. Like Darth Lungan's like, I'm gonna go up top, try to send an SOS. You got to go down below and get things done. And she's like, Okay, <laughs> anything. I gotta do what I gotta do. Anything for my country. Yeah. And this, but yeah, they decide, okay, I'm going to go up and I'm going to make as much noise as I can. That was another line where it was like, I'm going to like make a little noise, get, or do a little stuff or whatever. And she's like, get down tonight. And, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, dumb. It's, it doesn't, no. And, but she, he sends her off with like a gun. It's like, you're still a naval, naval, naval officer. Like, here's a gun and like, go get the virus or something. So off she goes. With the idea being that she was going to, you know, get the virus. Right. And so he, he goes up above. I think he even, like, snaps some necks on the way. He starts banging on the, uh, sending an SOS via Morse code. And they show him banging on this for so, so long. long. Well, this is after they got fired at once. Right. So so at this point, the submarine that was sent, the USS Indiana, is engaged. Like, the president's like, just take it out. Because they, they think that... They've been taken over, or they figured out that they've been taken over. I don't, I don't know if they, did they have a message from them, or no, they hadn't. They got it from the news. The news got it first. ZNN got it, and then the president called and said, "Good thing the news knows about it because yeah. we well, don't know what's going on." <laughs> yeah, so they well, they're like fire. Problem. Yeah, so like fire on the fire on the sub. So the U.S. is Indiana fires at them and just misses. Now barely because the ridiculous. terrorists are yeah. like. The the head guy is like a seasoned sub vet. No, basically, at one point he kind of implies like the big thing is that the the American technology is so good that he enables someone who doesn't really know submarines very well to like do all these countermeasures and launch missiles and stuff. Because he launched at one point he launches a missile and like blows a plane out of the sky from his submarine, right. and he's like, "God bless American technology," because he basically just pressed a button and it did it for him. So I think it's the same thing as like launch countermeasures and they launch some countermeasures and like they didn't blow up, and then which sure I I mean it's not like a super sub it's the same sub as the Indiana right seasoned vets on it. And so then they hear the SOS by Dolph Lundgren, and the U.S. government makes a decision. Or the guy on the who's kind of making the, the orders, yeah, who's making the orders for the submarines, like hold off, like we got good guys in there, and they can still take over the sub. And so the submarines, like, God damn it! All right, let's go up. And so they start to leave and like surface, and the the Russian controlled sub is like, well, screw that, and launches torpedoes at them, puts a puts a couple fish in the ocean. Oh, and they f- they said it. They said it. They said it as well. And you you could say there was a mutiny here as well, though. Agreed. Mutiny. I think they just took over a sub. Mutiny. I you usually think of being like people mu- people who were on the crew. And people are, oh, yeah, and then somebody's yeah, held captive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna look up the definition of mutiny. Yeah, right it could now. be a mutiny as well. But we've we've had a lot of tr- fish in the sea, and we've had a lot of uh, mutinies. What was the other one? Oh, crushed, crushed depth, depth. But they didn't have crushed depth in this one. No. It's been a while since our last crush death one. So anyways, he fires it and literally sinks the Indiana. He sinks a U.S. submarine. Which, all right, so think about this. 
the guy who's on the the aircraft carrier who's like, no, don't fire at him again. Because there's people on there that we could save. So we're like, okay, thank God we can save these two people. And they turn around and kill hundreds yeah. of Americans. You're like, was what, it worth it? What dumbasses. Um, <laughs> just blow that submarine out of the ocean. <laughs> right. Like, what do you care? Yeah, like, what it's going it to go to the bottom of the ocean. Nobody's going to be able to get Agent Red. Just blow it up. Yeah, it's just cut your losses. I didn't. I didn't understand that either. I was like, "What a terrible decision." I would love to, the the sequel to Agent Red Two should just be the court martial of that, the head of that <laughs> stupid uh, whatever. This is some long litigation. I would love that. Yeah, and then him dealing with the aftermath. His wife divorces him, and All he's right. like, his kids are like, "I can't live with the decision you made." Definition of mutiny, yeah. revolt or rebellion against constituated authority, especially by sailors against their officers. See. Or number two, just rebellion against any authority. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a tenuous tenuous one. I, I would I would think to say that we have mostly seen sailors against their officers. This is not sailors against their officers. This is more of a rebellion in general. Taking over a submarine as part of that rebellion. Right. The submarine goes down. And the Russian, you know, the people who've taken over the submarine are, are pretty jazzed. And now there's like a full out war on them. Like Dolph, even Dolph Lundgren knows like, oh, shit, they're going to get like blown out of the water. Even the Russians do, too. Like they're like, oh, man, we're going to get blown out of the water. We better launch the we better launch the Agent Red now. And Dolph Lundgren's like, we got to take over now because the president's like destroy that submarine. Wouldn't. And so they send I, all kinds I of stuff. I thought when, like, because they got planes and all sorts of stuff flying all over them, dropping bombs. Yeah. I'm like, couldn't they just have, like, dove much deeper, tried to get out of the range? Well, the problem is. or something. You're talking about the, the submarine they're on, the New Orleans or whatever. Yes. I think the real problem is, is that they want, they had one goal, right? They want to launch oh, Agent true. Red at New York City and, uh, and Moscow. And as we know from our other films, like, you have to be on the, you have to be, on the surface or close to the surface for the surface to, to do those sur- right. to those surface missiles. That makes sense. So, like for their end goal, like they needed to be pretty high up, and yes, they could have dove, but they would have basically just been biding their time, and then maybe another submarine would have come along and destroyed them or something. That would have been great. Just a, what like for this movie to be like three hours longer of them like evading other submarines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, know, like, like, survival you know, at this point. Stockholm syndrome. I'm into this movie. <laughs> right. And Let's keep it going. And Agent then Red. all of a sudden Dolph Lundgren sides with the terrorist, and then the head terrorist is now Captain Nemo, and yeah. it's just full circle. You love it. <laughs> and they're like, I got this special machine that makes us so we can't be seen by other submarines. It's called the Phantom. Don't worry about it. And Ed Harris shows up and he's a janitor and he's like, yeah. I'm just cleaning the submarine. Don't mind me. He's like, how do you survive that? How do you survive the virus? Like, I'm immune to that virus. I'm Ed Harris. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And then he's, and then all of a sudden there's all this string of murders going on. On the side. Like, oh like, no. Wait, could it be Agent Ed Red? Harris? Actually, this isn't Agent Red at all. It's just colored water. Yeah. The thing that's been killing everyone is actually Ed Harris, the janitor. <laughs> Final guy's got a broomstick sticking out of his ass or something. Oh, well, God. that's at Harris. <laughs> uh, oh, that's how they finish him. <laughs> um, okay, so we're making jokes. That's not really what happens in this film. No. <laughs> what really my notes happened... are done here because I'm like this movie. <laughs> yeah. So what really happened? Just to, just to, just to finish it off. Like they they're all everyone's attacking them. The Russians are doing countermeasures. They're they're shooting missiles at the planes. They're shooting planes out of the air. Like. CNN is like reporting like every plane that falls. Oh, they just destroyed a plane. It's like, how did you know that? Like, it doesn't make sense. You're a news right. person. How would you figure that out? And then they got like the worst leaks in that government at that point. And then the Russians are like, we got to launch this now. So he sends people down to go do that. And Linda, the doctor who has the gun, gets into like a gun battle. Uh, Dolph Lundgren other, kills one person. the other woman. Yeah. And but like they, the other woman, and she gets in like a, a fist, but basically a cat fight. It's pretty mm-hmm. sexy. And then she smashes a vial of, oh, no, no, she, yeah, she smashes a vial of the virus, like, in her face or something like that. No, 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 this one breaks in her hand. Somehow. Yeah, she breaks in her hand. She, she, I think she might have fallen over or something. Something, yeah. And You're so, thinking of the next fight. Yeah, scene. so she gets infected, and she starts talking to her beloved, the main bad guy, and is like, I'm going to die, I'm scared. And then he's like, I will avenge you. 
and I'm going to go and launch it. And she's like, well, I would actually prefer you just save my life. And he, he's like, well, too late. And <laughs> got other things going on. Hey, well. And then off he goes. They're going to have to go like two flights of stairs yeah. down. Uh, it's a way on. away from where the virus is. So. <laughs> it and so like she, 400 foot long. Come on. So she, she, he heads over to the virus place and she's like crying with like blood coming out of her eyes. It's real weird. Not nipples though. No, not any blood and any, any nipples. Just out of her eyes. And then... Um, uh, Hendrix is there waiting for him basically in the biocontainment room. So he gets there. He's like getting this stuff and Hendrix comes and they do battle and he crushes a vial of the virus. Right straight in his, in his mouth. mouth. It was yeah. freaking awesome. So they head up to the bridge of the submarine and kind of let everyone know like we've ta- retaken the sub. Then of course smashing a vial of the virus in your mouth is apparently the antidote to this virus because he arrives no big deal like uh, several minutes later ready to kill people again still right and they're like woo and then Dolph Unger just kills him no big deal it's like oh well after like a shootout that was way too drawn out yeah there's a shootout and they kill him and then they're like wait did you actually are you did you actually keep the boat and they're like we once again we still have the boat and everyone's like yay and they're like let's fuck on the submarine that's basically how it ends. And then they end. That's how the movie ends. The end is basically them looking at each other and being like, do we have time for this? And she's like, oh, I think we have time. We have 72 hours. And then they right. find that Right, which is how much time he had left on that antidote. <laughs> so well, they, had, they, had, they each had, they had one more. They each had one more uh, antidote dose. So they could have taken one more. What? And then got to the bone zone straight up on that sub. That's actually probably the first time... That's the first movie we had where there's a sex scene on the submarine. Well, it was really close in Phantom when Ed Harris was seizuring. Oh, this is also a time where him. randomly they moved the camera over and the captain of the submarine who's dead from Agent Red just had his dick out. Just flopped over. <laughs> I was like, why? It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, the Russian guy had his dick out the whole time anyways. so. But the thing that I thought was just goofy here is you know that everybody's celebrating because oh they got control of the submarine but i'm like how many people i know that submarine save these yeah. two yeah like you just should have blown it up like the president wanted in the first place yeah and so then we get what like 17 more minutes of a sex scene full penetration Dolph lundgren his dick is tinier than you'd think kind of weird i don't know <laughs> no comment yeah well it, it was it was just a little strange. They actually spent a lot of the time discussing how small his dick was, and then got to got to having sex with each other. Yeah. So, and that was the end of the film, Agent Red. It is not good. Uh, so, what would right. you say? Ten inches? A nine inch sub? What are we thinking? Oh my god! <laughs> the special effects sucked. You stock footage, special well, effects. Well, th- that and every time they would fire a gun, it was like oh, a yeah. cartoon drawn. Well, sometimes sometimes they would even not do it. Like they were firing a gun at one point, and like every other one, you could see a flash, like a muzzle flash. The rest weren't doing anything. It's the like, thing that I either you have bla- bad blanks or you're not coloring all those in. The thing that was really cracking me up was at the very beginning of the scene, which I guess was a scene from Stormbreak. Is that what you said? Um, storm, uh, storm chaser, storm chaser. Yeah. Um, they were firing at the storm helicopter. Ca- storm catcher, sorry. Storm, storm catcher. catcher. Yeah. The plane or the helicopter. And you could tell they only had two sound clips from guns being fired. Because one would be like, and the other one would be like, and it would just like go back and <laughs> forth. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, there's also a weird Come weird thing on. in that one is they had people like working on like a runway or something like that. Like it was like slaves, basically, that they were working on a runway. Right. And one of them was a guy in a dress. I don't know why. Not a whole lot made sense in no. any of this. So, how many inches you got, Alex? What you got? All right, I'm gonna explain a couple things on <laughs> okay. why I really did not like this movie before, and some before things. Before you get that... a seven, <laughs> I really didn't like this. <laughs> no. eight inches. No no no. No, 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 no. Okay, overall, I'll give it like a a point six nine just because of all the sexual innuendos <laughs> in it. Like, oh. okay, I get it. All right. Like, inches. You guys first off didn't even say like the very worst line out of the whole film. Did you guys That's even impossible. catch we it? We said I said four different terrible lines from this film. So. Okay, well you guys missed this one. It was at the very beginning when they're talking in the Pentagon, and the officer or the main commander guy's talking to Dolph Lundgren, and 
They said, okay, well, what's this even called? And they said, Agent Red. Oh, God. And Dolph Lundgren says, wow, sounds like the name of a bad action film. Like, they even admitted it within the first <laughs> five minutes in the movie. Yeah, they really... <laughs> but How did I miss that? No, yeah, they had that in there, and it's not good. We actually, I think we've mentioned all, all of the quotes listed on IMDb in their, like, notable quotes for this film, because they're all awful. But yeah, yeah that, one, that one stood out to me, too, because... I feel like that's another part of like D list movies that people enjoy is when it's like <laughs> they kind of know they're bad. Yeah, they're aware of it. Yeah. yeah. I do also like a movie where they use the title in the film. Yeah, that one. Well, this one was. They use it a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, the other thing I really didn't like was the actual submarine. Anyone that's watching this can clearly tell that when they are inside this so called submarine, it really is not a submarine, as there are concrete floors and cement blocks and. Dolph fell like 20 feet at the beginning. <laughs> like, there's no place in a sub. It looked like they were in a factory. And you could tell, clearly tell that it was not a sub. So that that really ticked me off. It is it is weird, though, because the submarine that me and Kyle are on right now is almost an exact replica of the submarine in Agent Red. It's very right. close. Yeah. Right. right. We even have faux brick walls. Uh, yeah. Something else I noticed when, we were, when I was watching it by myself, like, when... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the president or- ordered this airplane to start attacking the submarine. Uh, first off, it was a Russian MiG with an American pilot. It wasn't even an American uh, <laughs> submarine. Awesome. Second off, when they would fire a missile, like you could clearly see them firing an air-to-air missile go into the ground and all of a sudden it turns into like a 20 foot long torpedo like it's not even (laughs) consistent the entire way through like it was just these little tiny things when they were talking to the president they didn't even have enough money to get a good set for an oval office it was literally just a guy in a room with a sitting in a chair yeah Yeah. (laughs) It, it, it was so bad every time they would like first show a picture of the white house so you knew what you were going to you're like yeah oh, well obviously we're talking to the president yeah and i love i do love a film that has a portrayal of a president like it happens so often in films either a real president that exists like abraham lincoln being portrayed by someone weird like i think it was david spade or someone in Is a movie abe lincoln played abe lincoln in one of the adam sandler films kind of stuff so like oh, okay. yeah okay. so like th- there's like silly stuff like that but then there are the fake presidents too like the president from independence day and stuff like that and you can almost make like a hall of presidents of like all the different presidents that have been presidents in films president and this guy day. my god well there's but now awesome. and there's a bunch too now like independence day too i think had two different presidents maybe. i still need to watch oh my goodness you didn't see it it's amazing go watch it it's got I probably should have done that rather than watch this. Yeah, you definitely should have. It's not a good. It's not a. a it's not, not a an great, amazing film, amazing but it's film, better no, than but... Agent Red. So how many inches you got? Just to make sure. Still, uh, still point six nine. Point six nine inches. Okay, yeah. Kyle, what you got? Oh my goodness! Uh, well, how bad this was. I mean, going into it, I knew it was going to be. I knew it was going to be bad. Yeah. I at least thought it would be coherent. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. Nothing was making sense. None of the characters introduced at all. There was some okay action. I'm going to have to give it. And especially, it took a really long time to get on that sub. I guess I don't need to. I'm not trying to. I don't even know why I sound like I'm trying to convince you guys. I know. My rating. But I'm going to give it a one. Okay. I was going to say, if you gave it a two, I would have kicked you off this podcast. (laughs) It would have been unacceptable. It's a mutiny. First of all, it doesn't matter that it's not the worst made film ever. Yes, it's not The Room. Yeah, it's not Birdemic. Yeah, it's not like, there's even ones like, I watched a martial arts Z-list film called Black Friday. Like, those are all worse quality films. Like, you would visually look at them and be like, this is a worst, worst made film. Right. Just like from a production quality. Like, this isn't the bottom of the barrel. You're not scraping the bottom of the barrel production wise, but it is an incoherent piece of garbage that actually like made me uncomfortable with some of the lines. <laughs> like, it upset right. me with the, the tone of what it was doing. Like in every way, this is this this is a one inch sub. If we could have a zero inch sub, it would be, but then it wouldn't even be a sub. It's got to be a one inch. You suffer through it. It's a one bite of just shit that you have to. Um, <laughs> that you just want to vomit and you know, like, throw ugh. in the trash. I mean. My God! It's a it's one it's a it's an amuse bouche made by a contestant on Top Chef who gets thrown out on the first week. Am I right? Oh, you're right. Yeah, it's a one inch sub. This is you can't you it's it's gonna be oh. hard. We're gonna be hard pressed to find something worse. Like I even think when we watch, we do have another one coming up for you listeners. 
This one's got a 3.3 on IMDb. We have one that want to say it's a oh, 1. 1.9. Yeah, so, so. Stinger, so that's, that, that'll be a good case of where I, I'm i pretty sure Stinger will end up being worse production quality than this. But hopefully it makes more sense. And maybe there will be even more tits. Hmm. 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 Something to look forward to. Yeah, and maybe some more dicks by the captain, because there wasn't really a captain the sub in this case. I mean, I guess the Russian guy, you know, he pulled his out at one point just because he, I know he knew he he. He should, because it's an American sub, and that's what you do. But like, right. he didn't really do it for very long, because he he's felt nervous. like, well, and he he just felt like it was, um, you know, capitalistic. Like it wasn't really in his heart what he wanted to do, so he put it back in his pants. So, so yeah. <laughs> so this, all those lines. This was directed by some kind of soft core porn. Yeah. So guy. should we just get into the, should we get into some trivia? I don't even know. Uh, like Alex, you and what? I both have a photo with Ron Jeremy. That is correct. So it's not that type of type of porn. Soft would porn. you have liked to see Ron Jeremy in this film? It would have helped. Any anything could have helped. I anything. <laughs> he came to our college our freshman year, and we we got a photo with him. Great. That's <laughs> all. <solid. laughs> like, who set that up? You ever think about that, Alex? Like, there's got to be some kind of committee who's like, "Oh, we can get something to do on campus," and they're like, "Ron Jeremy's on some kind of debate tour. Let's get yeah. him." Yeah, they did it. What? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, that, that auditorium was packed. Yeah, my college, we used to have our spring like concert and stuff like that. And it's funny because we weren't too far from Brown University, which has like a legendary um, spring concert. So like the year that you know we had uh, Ying Yang Twins, which was pretty hilarious to go to. Right. Uh, we went to Ying Yang Twins. I was like, oh, that's fun. It's like kind of funny that we had them. Like it didn't, you know, the school I went to would have been. Kind of funny to think that we had the Ying Yang Twins as our like, uh, as our spring concert. But then, I don't think of the school you went to and think of, oh yeah, obviously you're gonna have the Ying Yang Twins. That yeah. sounds ridiculous. Yeah, we're technology school in Boston. <laughs> that doesn't give it away. <clears throat> it doesn't give it away. But um, <laughs> at the same time, the uh, Brown I think had Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> I was like, oh, I see what's going on here. You we- have a better one. <laughs> So, uh, remember our freshman year, Alex? They brought out uh, Soldier Boy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. He had the the one song. The one song. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, get him for Bowling Green Homecoming. Like, why? Like, he's also much younger than all of us. All Probably right, party way harder than we did. But. Uh, so we got a few few segments to go through. Yes. Um, should we do trivia? Should we do sub? What do you want to do now? Well. I think we should go into trivia because you want to? well, because just, cause go just with keep the role? it fresh. Yeah, yeah. Because I it, mean, we know what's we we've just went through the movie and these are interesting stuff and we've kind of talked about some of them a little bit anyways while we were talking. So let's go through them. Okay, <clears throat> so this is pre-sold under the name Captured. So a lot of these D-list, Z-list films are pre-sold. So you you basically get, give a picture and a concept like a plot and you sell it for you know production and stuff like that. So this was pre-sold under the name Captured. And if you look on IMDb, the picture for Agent Red is actually the picture that they sold it, so it says captured on it with Dolph Lundgren, and it has some like stupid background picture that doesn't make any sense. So it's not a film that ever existed, and yet that's the picture that's on IMDb. Ridiculous. And so the storyline in which it was under, or which it was sold, uh, on the sales flyer, uh, where Kevin Bernhardt was listed as the writer, but he did not write anything having to do with Agent Red, uh, was this. Jim Solomon, Dolph Lundgren, so not his character's name in this film or any film. Jim Solomon is a hired assassin sent on a revenge mission. Bernard Abrams, a wealthy businessman, has lost his daughter Allison to a white slave trader. Bernard wants all involved dead. The body count will determine Solomon's pay. Ten grand a head. Once Solomon reaches the Far East, he looks up an old friend, Jimmy Hickox, an American, thought to be a POW. Uh, Jimmy fills Solomon's weapons order, which reads like a shopping list for a coup d'etat. But he has little to offer in the way of information, except a warning that his mission is suicide. Solomon must infiltrate the country using his past government connections to obtain an F-14 fighter plane and a U.S. Navy L.A.-class submarine. As he pursues Allison's kidnappers, he hears of their systematic destruction. Each new clue leads to another notch in the body count and the leveling of another city block. Of course, those attacked bite, bite back. Initially, they are the on- they are only local groups, but it's soon revealed that the Triad Mafia is a big part of the ugliness, and then it worsens as the government rears its ugly head. But Solomon keeps killing, a mutilating machine. 
He is being chased as hard as he chases. Now in the country, he must fight his way out, until a final surprising conflict in which he rights all wrongs and puts an end to a big part of the slave trade. Is that a better movie? That's not being made, right? That's impossible to make. Uh, it, it sounds impossible. Uh, at least, I guess there's more of a... A story I, here? I feel like they actually probably tried to make this film, and then they came out with the end, like, so we made it, right? And they were like, no, no we like, weren't even close. That was literally <laughs> impossible. <laughs> no. It's like a dream made by a 14-year-old. It's not, you actually, can't actually put it to film. God, I wish they'd try. Yeah. All right, so after the film was completed, producer Andrew Stevens deemed it too inept to release. Screenwriter Steve Latshaw was brought in to make the film at least half competent, while Jim Wyorinski was hired to direct some new scenes, about 40 minutes of footage in three days. 40 minutes? <clears throat> so that's almost, that's like half the movie. That's most of the movie, yeah. Yep. So stock, yeah, so stock footage from Counter Measures, a.k.a. Crash Dive 2, which is also ended up being a remake of. So it's basically the same storyline oh because of how they had to recycle the plot because they used so many scenes from Ridiculous. it. Ridiculous. And then Crimson Tide, Solo, Steel Sharks, and Storm Catcher. So stock fo- then subsequently stock footage from this film was incorporated into the 2003 film Submarines starring Robert Miano. So, so you this say is Robert Miano and I don't even know who that is. I've never heard of it. No. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, so anyways, Jim Jim Wynorski is actually a softcore porn director. So if you look on IMDb, um I actually I, I don't know about hardcore. I didn't do all my research. I'll be doing more research later tonight if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh but so he directs under a number of pseudonyms. So almost everything on IMDb is Jim Wynorski directed as a different name. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he uh uh, you know, a lot of the Skinamax films that I remember from my youth, <laughs> trying to sneak down and catch a glimpse of the the Bear Witch Project on Cinemax, like that. Uh, he Dad, directed things watching? like Go that. Go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and so this is decidedly C, uh, C-list. It wishes it was B-list. But um, uh, now there's a, a bunch of major A-list stars that cash in on some of these smaller films. So <clears throat> I'm going to ask you a question. Well, this has been a better film with... Uh, Wesley Snipes. No. Who, who would he have been? Dolph Lundgren's character. Come oh. On. No. No, I don't think so. It, 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 it would be equally as bad. This is something that I don't think a character or an actor is going to change. Okay, what, about Brendan, what about Brendan Fraser? Brendan Fraser's career is in the toilet. <laughs> so, <laughs> But at this time it wasn't, right. right? He just had the, like, when did the mummy come out? Like, he was huge. Uh, mummy would have been right around now. So A couple, th- couple years later. No, 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 wait, wait. Uh, I remember my brother graduating eighth grade. So how do you I remember that? Because he went to the mummy when he graduated eighth grade <laughs> as like a <laughs> class trip. <laughs> oh my! Seriously? Yeah. So it would have been ninety nine. Yeah, ninety nine. Right before yeah, this. Exactly. At first, when I first pulled up, said two thousand seventeen. I'm like, wait. Oh, they just did redo that. No. Okay. Um. No, not at this no. time. Maybe now. What about Samuel Jackson? Samuel Jackson is awesome and I think, everything, I but think, I would hate to see him do something. But I think like he that. could have yeah. elevated. He could. He can. He, he's made a business out of elevating lower material. Yeah, he's really. I really enjoy his work. He's great. Well, and just like in 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 the fact that he's done a lot of films that I think would have been B list, but end up being released as A list films, like Snakes in a Plane and things like that, where he's like, "This is funny, and I'm going to act ridiculous, and you're going to kind of like it." But at least, all right. <laughs> You're pulling on my heartstrings here because Snakes on a Plane is one of my favorite films. I saw that on opening night, and literally it was Friday at like a 7 o'clock showing. So I'm there. I have a Snakes on a Plane shirt. Obviously. And um, they didn't – I was the only person in the theater, like with the person I brought. And Wait, are you crying? Yeah, I'm crying right okay. now. I get, yeah, his tears are streaming down. His they face. didn't even start the movie. I had to go out and ask them to start the movie because they didn't even know people bought tickets to it. <laughs> uh, but you bad. watch that movie, like, because you go in there with really low expectations. You're like, this is actually really, like, it's it's well done. It's put together. It makes sense. It's pretty way rough. more way more sense than Agent Red ever makes. Yeah, well, that's true. But I, I'm just saying, like, he's he's been in some films where if you looked at the plot of it, you would have been like, "This is terrible. Doesn't make any sense." Right. And then he he kind of like plays into it, and he plays in it. it he buys so much into it that you buy into it a little bit. So I think he's the only right. one maybe on this list where you really would be like, 
oh, this he could have elevated. He could have. He could have done better. Okay, what about Nick Cage? Uh, oh, I have said Nick always makes things better. And I'll stand by that. I, I don't love I, to see Nick Cage. I don't believe that. I think he would have played against this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and done what? What? What could he have even done worse? <laughs> could have deadpanned it. Could have not been oh. his crazy self. What about Bruce Willis? Die Hard. Bruce Willis. Dude, they just should have made Die Hard. I don't know what one they're on now, but I don't know what number this would have been at this time. But they should have made Die Hard a sub movie. And they should do a Die Hard sub movie. Yeah. Freaking awesome. What's that? We need to start like before. Before we start this podcast, we need to write out like anything said on this podcast is copyrighted immediately. It's ours. Die Hard of a Submarine is ours. Sorry, Bruce. You hear it. You're on board with us. <laughs> co write. We get co writing credit or nothing. Uh, number six. <laughs> so, Ed, okay, so we're what, getting nothing. What about Ed Harris? No. Ed Harris is an <laughs> action star. <laughs> okay, what happens if he's the bad guy? Oh, no. if he's the... <clears throat> so Ed Harris is the bad guy. We don't even know if Samuel he L. Jackson is the good guy. Okay, we're talking about Ed fucking Harris here. So, <laughs> look, he had he had his chance in Phantom, and he dropped it. Get so. with the program and recognize, because Ed Harris could do the best Russian accent. Alex, <sighs> you did not see how serious Jamie Space just got. When you <laughs> that's that's fine. That, that's I also Harris. cry. I also that's cry fine. for a little bit. <laughs> Tears were streaming down my face. I don't. I don't think he could even be associated with something like this. I just can't. Like. This is on its whole other level. No okay. one can save this. It's bad. It's bad. That's it. And so I uh, I usually try to uh, kind of accumulate five different trivia. There's not really five trivia for mm. this. So um, I'll just ask another question, which is, will any of the other films that we've already watched for the podcast benefited from Dolph Lundgren being in it? Hmm. I would have. I mean, he could. Phantom. Uh, yeah. Th- if you put, if you replace David Duchovny. With Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at least then you got somebody who can like physically just whip the shit out of anybody on the boat. He's imposing. He could probably do a Russian accent because he's you know, he's Swedish. Sweden. Yeah. Although it's funny in the movie they kept saying you American and like he's Swedish, but um, he's, he does a pretty good American accent at this point. I think so. Mm. I think Phantom. That's <sighs> my. I think that's my guy. All right. So he also could have been in. I don't know. I don't think he would. I think it would have done okay as number two in Down Periscope instead of Rob Schneider. Well, no. <laughs> I mean, and that's what you're right. It, we're basically same movie. Rob I Schneider. Remember. I can't even remember it. The one we watched from the 50s. Oh, uh, Run Silent Run Deep. Run Silent Run Deep. Dolph Lundgren is number two. Oh, as as uh, the guy who takes as over. Burt Lancaster. Guy. As Burt Lancaster. Yeah, Burt Lancaster's character. Um, eh. I'm not sure he's that character. No, he's more of an action guy. But he's an action he guy. He could have been at twenty thousand leagues. Could have been Kirk Douglas. Yeah, Kirk Douglas. That okay, that that is his role. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, Kirk Douglas' role. Yeah, yeah, he's the harpooner. I could see him being in another movie down the road that we haven't watched yet, but I'm not gonna. I'll review it. Ooh, and reveal okay. that when we get there. But okay. I don't think he would have done better than Kirk Douglas. Kirk no, Douglas no. did he's really well. Amazing. He also probably wouldn't have requested. The two ladies on his arms, <laughs> and, and then he probably would have taken away people. from the movie. Yeah, we don't even know what we would have had. And All then right, so I'm going to end. I'm just going to end with uh, what I'm now dubbing. So it used to be Six Degrees of Ed Harris. I'm going to call it the Phantom Zone now. Uh, Phantom Zone. <laughs> yeah, so the Phantom it. Zone. So we're entering the Phantom Zone. We try to make it back to Phantom. Bum, from... bum, bum. So you'd think Agent Red. Oh my God, it doesn't. It doesn't star anyone. I must be in trouble. No, I'm not. Okay, so Dolph is a star of Agent Red, obviously. He also portrays a submarine captain in Hail Caesar, the major oh my God. Coen Brothers film. That film features George Clooney. So I've jumped from Agent Red directly to George Clooney. That's ridiculous. Through submarine films. So George Clooney shows up in Spy Kids. And in Spy Kids, the kids escape the kidnapping of their parents using a secret submarine. Now, Danny Trejo is Machete, his, uh, his famous character, Machete in uh, Spy Kids. And he's also in the animated film Storks. Now you may be wondering, wait, is there a submarine in Storks? Well, in the animated film Storks, there's a pack of wolves who can form into anything they want to form into. And at one point, the head, the, the lead wolf goes, wolf pack, form of submarine. And they form a submarine and 
chase after the baby that they're chasing <laughs> no as a submarine no yeah, as a wolf pack submarine this yeah. happens mm-hmm. you can find it on youtube you can watch it on youtube <laughs> that's ridiculous <clears throat> so that's real and uh of course stork features the excellent voice work of kelsey Grammer. Oh. and kelsey Grammer, i mean fraser tossed salad and scrambled eggs we saw in down periscope and we've already taken down periscope to the phantom zone and so there we go straight to the phantom zone my wow. word yeah I'm telling you, you can take any movie pretty much in the world and take it to the Phantom Zone. That's only through submarine films. It has to feature a submarine. That's ridiculous. Who yeah. would have thought Storks? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the movies we jumped, it was it was Agent Red to Hail Caesar to Spy Kids to Storks to uh, so on, so on, so on. For, for to Down Periscope. Oh my to, gosh. Yeah, there's a bunch after that, but that's ridiculous. Yeah. No, Renny, you got some uh, well, some right. sub research? So, or we got? so, back to some of your trivia. Yeah. You said that when they first watched this, that it had to be reshot because it was incompetent. too incompetent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How bad was the first one? I would love to get my hands on that and just see what the hell what would be they funny, were looking at. It would be funny if it wasn't incompetent at all. It was like, just, this is awesome. Yeah. Or it, like... It, Not awesome, but like it's it's, it's okay. just like it's like a fine action film, but it just he's like the guy, like this porn guy, is like, there's no tits, there's no fucking, they're not saying words that are offensive. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, because they're on a submarine. Yeah, they're uh, na- naval officers. <laughs> it's like, no, they gotta fuck now. What? <laughs> they gotta fuck at the end of this. Get out of here. I'm reshooting this. Forty minutes of film. <laughs> That's. I mean. God, to redo 40 minutes, half yeah. the movie. Well, what else was going on? I, I think one of the things must have been is that they must he must have put something together that didn't have anything outside of the submarine, right? Like, if they had to add so much stock footage in, what did they have before? They, didn't, must right. have, they must have never shown the sub. Must, and it must have been really confusing, right? Like, This was confusing enough. Right, that's what I mean, though. Like... They get on a sub and then you just never leave it and they have to kind of, maybe they were trying to convey through words how they were being chased by another submarine and stuff. And they were like, okay, this is super hard to follow. We got to reshoot this. Anyway, all the problems aside, I do have a submarine I'd like to discuss. Good. So. Is it Agent Red's submarine? Is it the no, New Orleans? No, it's not the Ohio class. Uh, this is something. Wait, is that right? Is they, they were in an Ohio class? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. This is something that's actually, it's bothered me that we've watched seven movies and we haven't seen one of these subs yet. You guys have any idea? Like just like a, we have one of the most famous types of subs you hear about. Is it a Los Angeles loss? No. Is it a Seawolf? No. Is it? I've already done those. I know, but you're saying one we haven't seen. I haven't seen, haven't even heard of yet. And any, Mm. in seven movies, Mm -hmm. seven cinematic films of red October. No. What? <laughs> uh, a... Like a single man submarine? No. All right, guys, whatever. All right. All right. <laughs> we have not seen a or heard of a single U boat. Oh, that's true. Okay. Sure, sure, okay. sure, 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 sure. Seven films. That's well, all you used to hear about. We have we have watched almost exclusively Cold War versus Russia. So why would they be doing uh, U-boats? We had Run Silent Run Deep. And that was, uh, that was but that was Japanese. So, so we did the get the Pacific Theater. Yeah. What was that? What was the attack? What was the attack submarine for them? The uh, something class submarine, oh, the Akita or something. The uh, Akila. No, the Akula was Akula. Russian. Oh, is that right? That was from Crimson Tide. Oh, never mind. Come on. <laughs> Trivia episode. Trivia episode. Come on. All right. So anyway. Yeah, you you are the submarine expert. All right. Uh, I just run the sonar. <laughs> All right. So for this one, I wanted to, you know, get our hands on a U-boat type information. Not actually get our hands on a U-boat. I don't have one. Well, eventually yeah, we will. Yeah, we will. Once this goes big. And we operate in the Great Lakes yeah, exclusively. This is, this is sponsored by Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> Apple. Thanks, Billy. Apple um, submarines. So anyway, I went with a German type UE-1 submarine. This is a mine lane submarine from World War I. Oh. Technically a U-boat. So this thing runs. It has two six-cylinder Benz engines. It's kind of odd. It's like two of my cars. <laughs> right. Uh, sorry, I don't have a Mercedes. <laughs> but they generate 900 horsepower, and when they're submerged, they have a 660-kilowatt generator. 
These things are kind of slow. They got a top speed when they're surfaced, 9.6 knots or 11 miles an hour. When they're submerged, mm, they're only... Slow. That's pretty slow. When they're submerged, they're only going 7.9 or 9.1 miles per hour. Wow. Because when, when, you, when you went through some of the American subs... They're cruising. They're going real fast. Yeah, yeah. but right. this is old. This is older. And this older is one. this is also a mine lane sub. Yeah, yeah. It's not an atta- a fast attack sub. Right. Yeah. So, also with this, it only has one torpedo tube. Huh. Right? Isn't that inconvenient? Where is it located? <laughs> to the front. Of the... It didn't. There wasn't a whole heck of a lot of information <laughs> found on it. But uh, so the main function of it is to lay mines. It has thirty-eight mines on board, and it has two mine lane tubes. Mm. These are kind of smaller. They only hold four officers, 28 sailors. Oh, wow. For the range, they can travel, when they're surfaced, 7,880 nautical miles. Sorry, 7,880. Okay, so it's like 10,000 miles or something, right? Isn't it like a nautical mile, like one point something miles or something? Alex, hop on that. Um, oh. And so when they're submerged, they can go 83. They're only 186 foot long. So while this is a lot smaller than a lot of the other ones, it's still not a midget class submarine. Because mm. midget class, are sorry, hundred... little little person class submarine. Yeah, because those are 150 tons of displacement. This actually is 755 tons. And so there were 10 of these uh, that were made, and uh, only 10. 10. Wow. But they were all either surrendered or sunk. Or, oh right. <laughs> or scuttled. And I was like, I was like, Germany, yeah. World War One. <laughs> And I was like, "What is, what is scuttled?" Mean? You don't know what scuttled is. Do you know what it is? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah reading, they, I will... they've talked about it a couple times in the other movies. You purposely sink it. Yeah. You wow, scuttled, I even scuttled... have the definition down here, but you guys know it. Yeah, I know because yeah, like I'm, I'm reading, shirt. I'm reading Red Red Hunt for Red October. Yeah. So and they like... just they just pretended to scuttle Red October. Oh. So it's when you purposely open the hatch and you just fill the hole with water and boom, sink it. Most of the time they just they just run, run it down to crush depth, but yeah. And in Red October, they pretended to cause an explosion, and then it sunk. But... See, in House of Waters, I guess they scuttled it. Yeah. They brought it back up. No, it was scuttled. Did they bring it back up? Well, when they were putting out the fires. Right, right, right. But I'm saying in the end, it did sink. Oh, correct. So it was scuttled. Yeah. So that's all I really have on that. Yeah. That was fun. I like that one, actually. Yeah. Short, sweet, really interesting. And I, I do feel like I've... Since I've been able to listen to a couple of our past uh, episodes, uh, recently edited, almost ready for release, uh, I've actually been able to rehear some of the stuff. One of the funny things to hear is like you talking about how bananas are bad luck on one episode, and then like there's going to be an episode like two episodes later where I'm like, and bananas are bad luck, and you're like, I literally talked about them. I'm like, wait, you did? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because I edit them, and so I sit there and I, have, I listen yeah, to you it probably a lot. Hear I'm just like, I've heard it all. And I'm not paying attention at all. <laughs> like, I'm not listening to anything you guys are saying. <laughs> so that's it for Subs Worldwide. Um, Alex, I know you were telling me you got one hell of a news article. I, I do got a news article, but before I dive into it, uh, one nautical oh. mile equals 1.15 normal mile so okay there do you, you wonder go. why this why why, why do things, they do this why are things so far off on these things well no they why do they it with knots and nautical miles Leagues. why just change it yeah why i don't know maybe elevation of water waves i don't know does that change it it's at zero to sea level who knows all right <laughs> all right yeah maybe so... it's probably measure it's probably some way that they measure it you know, yeah, I don't know, like a mile is, I don't know how a mile came about to be like the length that it is, but a nautical mile probably came about in some way of them measuring from some percentage of longitude or latitude well, actually, that, you, um, that you go. A mile was actually invented yeah. um, by the king of Denmark. He went out on a frozen lake and he rolled a bowling ball. Mm. And however far it went until it stopped, they determined it was a mile. Wow. Do you know how they determine a foot? The size of somebody's foot. I no. actually made I actually made mine all up. I don't know. No, it was that the uh, submarine. I know you did. That was obviously <laughs> fake, but listeners, <clears throat> mine's I not. Uh, when they when the first submarine launched, they said, "As the captain, you get to ceremoniously take out your dick." And he took out his dick, and someone was like, "Holy shit, his dick's the same size as my foot!" And then they were like, "The length of his dick's now called a foot." It was actually only in the 19 early 1900s that the the length of foot became a thing 
I believe it after um after all the growth hormones and milk affected things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right, Alex. Let's yeah. get back to let's your Let's get article. some news. <laughs> All right. So updated. Like, what the uh, hell? Updated today, earlier this morning. So uh, as everybody almost knows, uh, there was a famous drug kingpin called Pablo Escobar, and he would actually uh, make or purchase. I'm not exactly for shit uh, how he did it, but he would make little submarines so he could submarine or uh, smuggle cocaine. Uh, anywhere around the world that he wanted to. Anyways, it's called um, narco subs, right? Sure. And um, <laughs> from what I've understood, this news article I just found today says some ex CIA uh, agents, I guess, are diving around in the Caribbean and they think that they found one of his subs. Now they haven't released if they, if it's for sure one of his subs or not, but what they're hoping to find is that they think Pablo Escobar still has. $50 billion worth of treasures hidden around the world, and they hope that this submarine helps them find a good portion of it. Doesn't say anything else about the sub, like what kind of sub it was. Obviously, it's probably like really cheap and really crappy, but they just said they think they found one. Yeah, so Wikipedia says that they're custom made. Okay. Ocean going self. So I'm not sure they necessarily have a class. Like it's not like a Los Angeles class sub filled with right, cocaine. Right. Right. That would right. be. That's what we're going to awesome. be doing when we get to purchase our Sea Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> no, our Sea Wolf filled with cocaine. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we buy the USS Jimmy Carter, which yeah. is the largest one <laughs> by 100 foot. They're mm-hmm. like, what are those guys ever doing with it? And I was just loading it with coke and moving shit yeah. around. That's crazy, though. Yeah, it is crazy. They found one. Yep, they think they found one, yep. There's some YouTube videos of narco subs, and they look crazy. It's tiny little subs filled with submarine. All right, with cocaine. That's cool, Liam. Yeah. yeah, so it, hopefully they found it. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of money sitting out there. Uh, the same article I read said that they found $8 million in some little like bungalow out in the middle of nowhere in a forest uh, where they used to make cocaine there, but hmm. uh, they shut it down and he just hid $8 million there. So who knows? There's probably money hidden in the submarine. Right. Wow, that's almost as much as we make from this podcast. Right. Yeah, just about. So my, my main question is, why are we even doing this podcast? Why are we out there looking for narco <laughs> subs just stashed with money? Well, that's what we're doing. We're trying to learn about subs so that we have oh, a better okay. chance of finding them. I mean, we don't know. We don't have the knowledge yet right. to successfully do that. We'll build our sub hunter sub. Also, oh yeah, uh, that name's copyrighted. Uh, yeah, and, and when we when we have all our movies that we release, there's only one goal in mind. <laughs> yeah, once we get the, we'll, we'll make those movies, copyright all the ideas, and you know we, things. All woman sub. I think that was one that we did. Oh, um, we did. You know things like that. Like once we get all of the capital, we can really turn that capital uh, into investment, and that investment is us searching for cocaine submarines. Perfect. So, I mean, it's got to be better than stocks and bonds, right? Better than Bitcoin. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> so, what do you do for a living? Uh, I try to track down cocaine submarines and. Oh, are you successful at it? Yeah, we we find them. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, you know, don't worry about it. It's a nine to five type thing. We find more than we uh, turn in, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Why are you so jittery? <laughs> Why are you asking so many questions? All righty. So, Agent Red. So, next week is Agent Red again. Uh, Why not? From here on yeah. out, or Agent Red. Why Agent not? Red. I don't think. I mean, listen to our ratings. Nobody would recommend sitting down and wasting your time with this. No, I mean, and, and we're we have another submarine, 2003's submarines, starring the famous Robert Miano. We'll have to rewatch parts of this film again. That's horrible. Yeah, yeah. Why are you taking stock footage of this? Because it's already and, filled with just stock footage. Oh my god! <laughs> <It's> really, <laughs> just taking stock footage from something else. So probably. it is. Yeah. Oh, and every yeah, time okay. they dive the sub, I was just laughing because it was the gooey. same scene and, and you user. could tell it's from crimson tide oh sure, sure but they just kind of like crop it a little bit so you can't see the top yeah and that yeah. film or you know that shot we know is from tony scott flying around like filming that sub and they're like how Leave do we us even alone. get the rights for that no idea no clue all right well signing off thanks for tuning in episode seven agent red that's my favorite one
Thanks for listening to Submersion. Find us on SoundCloud and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.